Hello guys and it's this time of the month when we talk about uh, what to change in the future and the balance council is coming in one week exactly so on the next Monday so not this Monday but the next Monday and you have still one week for voting and it's approaching so every time we do it one week before I talk about the changes and first thing that I need to say at this moment Okay, first thing is that I have a lot to talk about this this time, so bear with me. Second is that I'm in wife beater at the moment, so things are getting serious. And third one is, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> okay, what I told you so? Everyone, everyone on the websites were screaming how fucked we are because of alumni. Everyone was panicking. And I told you don't panic do not panic alumni is not a big problem as long as Badar students and Aretuza students are not touched and I was right I haven't seen a single alumni deck being played this season uh, and I don't know if we will see the tournament decks soon because I have prepared for one of the tournament but no one is playing alumni because why? Because it doesn't matter that alumni got one power change. It doesn't matter. That's all I wanted to start with it. So first of all, as always, I will go through the recent changes from the last changes and see how impactful they were on the meta. And I te I'm telling you, they were not much impactful. First shiny, not impactful. Vesemir, not impactful. Alumni, not impactful. Demon Warpack, no, no, not impactful. Witcher Hunter Execution, a little bit impactful. So I will tell it green. Uh, Griffin Witcher, not really impactful. Singer, not really. Demon Smuggler, not really. Griffin Archer, not really. Poor fucking, not really. Madam, I guess, I don't know. No one is playing it, so maybe it was impactful. But not really on meta, but on the deck. Same with this. Lara, not impactful. Ch Re Regis, people still play it, not impactful. Not impactful, not impactful, not impactful, but created some cool decks. Not impactful, not impactful, not impactful, not impactful, not impactful. Uh, of the books, maybe a little bit. I see this as to go leader. Oh, maybe not really, but sometimes. It's not impactful, 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 not impactful. Uh, not really, people still play it in the decks they would play it and they didn't play it in decks that they don't play it. Not really, maybe a tiny bit, but not really, not really, not really, not really, and a tiny bit. Okay, I will change this to a tiny bit and this to the tiny bit. And this to a tiny bit. So these votes were horrible in terms of creating fun on the ladder. I'm telling you guys, these votes, and I was saying this, this vote, this vote last month didn't matter that much. There weren't a lot of changes that mattered, and those that mattered didn't create a new meta. We didn't have any new decks approaching, we didn't have any old school decks completely nerfed. We touched like Nilfgaard a little bit, but Nilfgaard got here a buff as well, so it's like it balanced each other. And it we can see the same in the data, so we will go to the data because I love data. As you can see, these are the statistics from current season and historical st uh, statistics from this season on the pro rank. Bear me with. It's very important to uh, remember that it's on pro rank on top 500 uh, people. As, and you can see, NR was fine, and it's still fine. It's always like this, it's always uh, like the faction has higher win rate on the end of the season. And NR was fine, NR got a, little, a lot of changes, it's still on the same level. Every single faction pretty much is on the same level. And it's pretty healthy uh, level, except of Scoia'tael. Scoia'tael is a little bit, a tiny bit good but if you look at the data it's only like the gap looks big but it's only like two percent so it's only two percent we had when it's five it's a panic mode because then it's pretty much the meta is dominated by one faction but two is not bad uh, two means that maybe square tail should get hit a tiny bit but the problem is with balance cancel we have 40 votes so if you buff something or nerf something by tiny amount and 
we cannot really coordinate it, so it's gonna be like huge hit to one faction, probably. But overall, the meta is not bad. If you go to play rate, which is very interesting, it's also pretty good because usually Nilgert is on the top of play rate unless uh, it's completely destroyed. But this time, even the play rate is pretty equal, at least on, for the four factions here. Monsters is not bad, staying only a few percent behind. And Scarlet Syndicate is the worst, uh, the least played faction, but it's historically also accurate unless the uh, faction is super OP. No one really play it. Like not pe many people like playing syndicates, so this is normal. On pro rank, also you usually have to focus and play better on syndicate to perform on its uh, highest power, so people tend to look for something else. So overall, we have a pretty good meta again. I want to highlight it again. And also I want to highlight it again. People panicked extremely about these changes. Like people said, this is the last time I'm stay playing. Uh, Reddit and Balance Council is completely ruining the meta and this will be unplayable NR mess. Turns out it's not. NR got the most changes and it didn't impact their win rate that much because a lot of those changes did not matter. They really didn't matter. People were panicking about Rune Ward. I haven't seen it in a single deck that played against me. People panic against Alumni. I haven't seen it. People panic about the Demon Smuggler. I haven't seen it. People panic. People just like to panic. And I urge you to not panic next time we see changes. Because some of them, every time I look at them, for the first 30 seconds, I'm like, holy shit, this is insane. And then I look at them again and calculate stuff and it turns out they are not that impactful as I thought at first and I encourage you to do the same. So I also tracked my data this season and I have uh, I have access to my 40 last games of uh, of the of this season and next time I should also check what uh, archetype people are playing. But this is my stats on the rank from 5 to 4 or 3, uh, which is not pro rank, which is very important because I want to show you that people on other levels play different stuff. And that's why I never know if I should balance stuff in uh, when looking at the pro players or should I balance what I see. Because, you know, I'm gonna play, so I should probably balance things around what I'm gonna play. What I don't care what pro plays, <laughs> if I play, but pro plays also have an impact on people on other others. And as you can see, the, the faction I play the most is Squirtle, which is actually pretty similar to the data from pro rank. And then, whoops, then I played the most uh, Nilfgaard and Monsters, uh, which is also pretty close. And also people usually on lower ranks uh, like Nilfgaard, even if it's not good. So Nilgard is always tend to be mm, most a lot played, but I also played a lot of Syndicate that the, that people don't play on the pro rank. The funny thing is I only faced one Skoya, uh, Skellige deck, uh, but other than this, the balance is pretty pretty spot on to be honest. Even not on a pro rank, uh, and this is not this is only play rate. It's not win rate because I cannot track the win rate of uh, below pro rank, but. At least play that is similar and usually people don't play unless you are as stupid as me you don't play stuff that is bad you usually play stuff that you consider good because you want to win this is the most common objective for competitive games like it's not mine i usually play just to have fun and create stupid decks but most of the people play on the ladder to win so they play the most optimal strategy they like also and it looks quite balanced, so it's not bad. Uh, I also wanted to go through uh, the recent tournament. So exactly today, we have a tournament that is uh, has a even nicer prize pool, and I think it's organized by the Russian community. But I wanted to show what decks they are playing because it also reflects the data. Because if you have fun tournaments, it doesn't reflect that good. But if you play have tournaments like this one with a prize pool, you actually want to win, so you bring the best uh, factions. And as you can see, you can see a lot of different factions, and I see every single faction here, and a lot of uh, different archetypes. For Squirtle, it's mostly Precision Strikes with a little bit of uh, 
movement and a little bit of uh, uh, Mahakam Forge. I think only one Mahakam Forge is here. And it's mostly like if you choose the random one, it's mostly a uh, rent free deck with uh, like good stuff, good units, uh, rent free. For Skellige, I see most of this is this Ursin Ritual, so it's a self damage, like a classic self damage. For Nilfgaard, it's usually Imposter or Enslave, so also a classic deck. Uh, NR is a little bit uh, interesting because they play different stuff from Stockpile to Shield Wall. They are not playing uh, Inspired Zeal, which makes me happy. And it's mostly like uh, good units decks, as you can see, like a uh, control heavy decks. Um, or, haha, there we go, one alumni deck. But uh, with Shield Wall, uh, not with, uh, with uh, Inspired Zeal. But it didn't make like uh, alumni broken at all. Again, I'm, I'm still standing by my I told you so. For monsters, it's usually uh, Arakas Queen, but also Gerny, also. Uh, Frost on also overwhelming hunger and uh, and yeah and that's it so people tend to play pretty much uh, every faction as you can see syndicate is a little bit less visible but there are some syndicate as well so people are playing everything I will put this uh, tournament bracket into the description below so you can get inspired by some of these decks or you want to check by yourself uh, and also there are some fun decks here as well that you can try on the ladder, but remember that tournament, la uh, tournament decks and ladder decks are a little bit different thing most of the time. But as you can see, the balance is pretty good. We see every faction being played and at least two leader abilities for each faction, but so there are some with four even. So again, pretty good balance changes, uh, pretty good balance on the ladder. So the question is, what should we nerf? What should we buff? What are my balance picks for this season? And I'm telling you right now, because this is the video that I wanted to make for this balance. And I'm telling you, I have no clue because this meta is pretty good. So I don't want to ruin it. And I, at this moment, still don't know what to buff or nerf. I think I will wait still. Like usually I have my buffs and nerfs prepared one week uh, before and I adjust it, I adjust them slightly because I like to think about them you know I choose like 16 cards and then I think if it's a good idea because sometimes I came back to it like one day after and I realized that uh, something doesn't make sense but this time I actually don't even know how to prepare my 16 cards so I looked for inspiration and I for example checked found a Chinese community bars and nerves and their idea is that you they don't want to uh, nerf anything and i know that people on reddit hate it but i kind of agree with it especially if we have meta like this one if we start to nerf stuff we will nerf it too much i can i believe we will nerf stuff too much and uh, everything will just suffer from it and we create imbalanced meta so if you can boost it a little bit you can uh adjust it better and uh, especially if you boost something like leader abilities you are making overall deck a tiny bit better but you are not breaking the cards in it because the cards stay the same you just allow them to pretty much change one card to provision higher cards so on average you give them like one point so look at the meta uh it's very interesting to see damsel in the, the, the this first card but uh this first card that i never <laughs> remember the name the knight uh is uh, it's kind of a greedy deck and i'm i'm not sure if this change much because if you make this uh, card change it's only making my one archetype better so i'm not a big fan of it radaya it's pretty cool to see because people uh if they play usually play shroop but radaya sometimes miss the mark so i like to see radaya mark the mage is also pretty fun card to change same with uh, the provision nerfs uh, phoenix is a very interesting one because you can play it in Golden Necker, same with Living Armor. And uh, Living Armor also makes you um, play uh, Construction, Constructoids, Constructoids? What was the name? I have this monkey clapping in my head, in my, in my, in my brain. But anyway, this deck, this doesn't matter, I think, so I don't like this change that much. 
Uh, but again, for Scrattle, for example, I like uh, both because, again, Golden Necker decks and uh, arch nice buff for, for one archetype that is a little bit uh, worse. Uh, Candle, maybe 8 provision is too much, but Candle is super powerful card, so I would keep it. And Leader Abilities, I kind of like this change, and it uh, buffs all of the Skellige, and as you can see, Skellige is usually uh, the faction with uh, the maybe not worse performing but it's performing overall quite bad and bump in provision would probably give it a little bit more options at least to play different archetypes so i don't i don't hail this i, I i'm fine with it Ooh, the storm came to my i can hear the storm when i say that skellige should get a buff maybe we should buff uh, a rain decks so but yeah so overall i have no clue what to nerf and if I would have to choose, I would probably, I would consider nerfing Renfrey to 15 provision to uh, make it very, like, even more, pro like, maximum, because the, her effect is super powerful. Uh, but for example, I wouldn't touch Renfrey's gank, because uh, this is fine, you are paying a lot to play them, and uh, you need to get Renfrey as well, so I probably wouldn't touch them. And uh, so yeah, so I, I, I even if you make rent three one power fifteen provision, I would not touch rent rent three gang. I was even thinking if there is a deck that actually wouldn't play rent three but would play rent three gang, and maybe in the future <laughs> there will be something like this, but maybe not yet. So I wouldn't. So maybe I could touch rent three because there are uh, I know monsters syndicate no Skellige and uh, Squirtle have options to play them in decent decks but also this is like few decks that play her and i don't want to over nerf her so i actually don't mind uh, keeping her as she is uh, other stuff that i like to change during the, my votes is look at 10 provision cards and make them ninth provision for golden necker because i find uh, golden necker strategies actually fun so if i would uh, buff something i would probably aim in those categories and there are some cool cards that you can change for uh, nine provision that can benefit the golden necker decks uh, this can be francesca this can be avalak this can be shiny this can be uh uma it's don't touch Corati heatwave please don't 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 it can be clean it can be even rain fine it can be sandor a very good set digestion in the past, it can be Tirgvi, it, it can be... Don't touch trees, probably. Mm. Maybe even Rune Mage is scary as well. But there are some cards that you can try to even Aguara to Night Provision and make fun Golden Necker decks with them. Uh, if another thing that you can uh, do, if you are not sure what to buff, you can go for archetypes that use a lot of similar cards like Constructs or Dragons and change one of them because then you overall change the whole archetype to be uh, better. It's it is the same with Madoc. I know that people are recently hating on Madoc on Reddit and I have no clue why, because this card is quite bad at the moment because it creates uh, low tempo. But if you want to change, for her, for example, Madoc, you can change bombs. So you, you can boost the whole, arc whole archetype by just buffing or nerfing uh, the provision of bombs. So if you don't sure, not sure like me, you can go with uh, this. So you can go for look for packages. Same for example, I know that Harmony recently uh, was playing very uh, frequently, and I know that people like to or so, sorry not uh, or Harmony. I wanted to mention Symbiosis, and uh, a lot of people play Okwen, and if you want to nerf Okwen, you don't have to like target Okwen directly, but you can target one of her uh, Dryads or whatever they are called, Naiads. So for example, you can change the Naiads and they instantly, like the whole archetype got worse. It's the same, same with uh, Patience, Witchers or anything like this. So I would probably aim in those categories. But overall, I'm quite satisfied with the meta and I don't want to change much. So. I don't know, I have one more week, I will think about it, and I'm open for your suggestions. So if you have some great suggestions for nerfs and you can 
nerfs and buffs and uh, you can make bead with <laughs> uh, I will consider them and usually I have a lot of ideas for buffs but not many for nerfs and especially in this kind of moments when the meta is pretty decent I don't want to merge I want I don't want to nerf some cards because like if meta is decent and you nerf a card it will just drop from meta but this meta will stay the same and I don't want that so I don't know you tell me Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.